This episode is Elena and Kane. Elena and Kane. Oh god. The amount of embarrassment and shame that I felt in that moment. Tough guys. <laughs> Take two. Hi guys, welcome to our first episode of Open Up. <laughs> this is my new concept with forcing my guests to do like over splits or like anything flexible. And today my guest is Heather Chan. <laughs> Might not be a great first guest because you can actually do way better over splits than me. But um, I needed someone that I'm comfortable talking to for this because um, I don't know how to interview people. But this is how I'm gonna learn how to talk to people because I'm kind of socially awkward. So she chose me to be the guinea pig. So I chose <laughs> Great, right? Nice Heather. to know. All right. Okay. Hi, Heather. Hi, Elena. <laughs> Welcome to my first episode. Thank you for being my first guest. Thank you for employing me as your first guest. <laughs> are you gonna use that as a microphone? Yes. Who are you? My name is Heather. I am a former elite gymnast that was on the U.S. national team for six to seven years. Go Team USA! Woo! Woo! Haven't you ever done like elements and just like stared at yourself the whole yes, time? Yes, I would okay. just stare at the mirror yeah. and be like, Elena, you suck. Anyways. What? How old are you now? I am 24 years old. I am going to be 25 in one month. <laughs> Her birthday is in June. I don't know if I'll edit this by, by the time <laughs> this comes out. <laughs> My Everyone just say happy birthday in the comments. Happy Woo! birthday! Woo! Okay. 25 quarter life crisis. Let's go. Oh, great. Thank you for reminding me. You're welcome. <laughs> what, what do you do currently? I am a student at UC Irvine. And I now have my own gym teaching little kids. So how did you start rhythmic gymnastics? There was like this tumbling class at preschool where it's literally just a bunch of babies that's just rolling around like little potatoes <laughs> on the floor. But ever since then, that class that I took, I've always really enjoyed moving around the carpet. I begged my parents to have me start gymnastics but they would never allow me to because I was already pursuing different extracurricular activities like piano and Chinese dance. Were you doing artistic in the beginning or rhythmic? That's where it comes to second grade. They made a deal with me after being so fed up of me asking all the time. They're like, if you get all straight A's, we will allow you to take one gymnastics class on a consistent basis. So I was like, okay, fine, bet, I'll do it. <laughs> so I did and they had to uphold their end of the bargain deal. And so I was finally at the age of I think it was eight years old, I took my first artistic class mm. once a week at a gymnastics school that had rhythmic, artistic, parkour, men's gymnastics, and never really excelled at it, even though I truly did enjoy <laughs> flipping around the carpet. The rhythmic coaches always saw me because I was so soft and I never had the muscular ability to stay in one place like in a handstand like I was always like the noodle they kept asking me and asking me and asking me and I said no 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 because I didn't really want to just dance on the carpet with apparatus mm -hmm. I'd rather be flipping around then competition season came for rhythmic and they pulled out this magnificent beautiful sparkly leotard <laughs> and I'm like okay I'll switch over now so when did you switch in, when you were eight? Yeah, I was about like eight and a half years oh, old. Wow. Yeah, so I started pretty late according oh, to rhythmic yeah. standards. Yeah, I started when I was six. We're gonna fly to another country. Oh, which country would you like to fly to today? Today, let's fly to Italy because oh. I am dreaming of some pasta. I know, that sounds good. <laughs> some pasta and pizza. some margarita. <laughs> margarita? That's... Oh, margarita pizza. Oh, margarita pizza. Yeah. You like transitions once you saw the um, leotard. Mm -hmm. What else like made you really interested in rhythmic gymnastics? There was like a lot of difficulty for me in the beginning. I just really couldn't get the concept of like throwing things and using basic work of apparatus. But once I got the hang of it, it was started. It was okay. But I was always interested into body difficulties mm -hmm. because it was something that always came a little bit more natural to me than others. Maybe 11 or 12 years old, I realized how to jump and really use that ability. Jumps became a part 
of my identity as an athlete. Mm -hmm. She did fly really high and because of her flexibility, it was really beautiful. So for rhythmic gymnastics in America, we have level threes to level tens. Mostly like girls start from level three, but like if you've done like artistic or dance before, some of it is like a little bit more familiar. So some coaches might put them into level four as their first level, I guess. I don't know why I start from level three, not level one and two. I started level three because I, I did not know how to do anything. Because I did artistic yeah. and I started at such a late age, my first coach put me into level five. By that time, the competition season was rapidly approaching. So I was just given routines and basically said, oh, let's just put her out on the competition floor. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I competed level five and I basically went five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten elite, and then ten national team. To go from level nine to level ten, in my generation, we had this thing called qualifiers where only level nines and tens can compete. When I became a level ten, you had to be in the top 25 out of all the level nines and tens that competed. And it was really hard for level nines because you were competing against the level 10s and national team members to get a spot into level 10. Yeah. Were you able to get from level 9 to 10 in your first year of being a level 9? Miraculously, yes. My coach was like, there's no way that you yeah. ever make level 10 this year. Oh okay, yeah, you go. You can try. Like, let's just go. Somehow, we went in, no expectations, and we did four clean routines and somehow made it. Once you became a level 10, how much longer did it take for you to get into national team? I made level 10 my first year. My second year, I made elite. And then the year after that, my last year junior, I made national team, I think, fourth? I think back in the day, we didn't have that many seniors compared to juniors. You're a junior until the year you turn 15. Right. And then you start sure. becoming a senior in the year you turn 16. It was like a little bit more easier for level 9 seniors to get into level 10. Nowadays, more people are like continuing after their juniors. Which is great. Which is great, we love that. Because it used to be like your peak would be when you're a junior, right? Mm -hmm. But nowadays it's like you're peaking when you're a senior. Ooh, that stretches. Yeah, that does stretch. I know you switched to like many different gyms, but if you're comfortable talking about that. Yeah, I first started with LA School of Gymnastics. I was there for a couple of years until a parent came up to me and almost hit me right before challenge and thankfully one of the men's gymnastics coaches you know saw the whole situation and was able to break it up and you know a lot of my old artistic coaches was able were able to see me going through that and they were able to comfort me and help me then moved gyms i moved a total in my athletic career about eight times even more coaches and I don't condone it at all bouncing around between coaches and gyms based off of my personal experience because it was not only hard on me mentally and emotionally but it was hard you know on my family as well they did whatever they could to support me throughout my gymnastics career and I'm very very grateful for them to be able to give me those opportunities the bond between a gymnast and coach is very important. They're almost like a parental figure. They're not only somebody who puts you out on the carpet or just gives you correction, they're somebody who coaches you even throughout life. That bond, if I was able to, you know, have a coach to stay with me like one on one from the very beginning to the very end of my career, I would have I would have loved to have that. Some gymnasts, you know, don't break it off, you know, with their previous coach very well. I'm very happy to say that I have a great relationship with most of them and I still talk to a lot of them to this day. That's really interesting to hear from my side because my mom was my coach. So it was already like a easier way to like bond but like usually like your coach is a stranger you know and you have to like bond with this random stranger you just met when you were like six years old do you have any advice for the rhythmic gymnasts that move gyms? yeah so my advice for gymnasts would be if you can at all possible stay with the gym that you're at to finish the season coaches are always there to support you no matter what no matter what decision you make at least you know in my experience leave things on good terms if you're having like a hard time don't bottle it all up you, you know talk to people about it because i'm you're not the only person that's ever been in that situation yeah you can even come to me and talk about it because i have a wealth of knowledge in that <laughs> aspect of gymnastics can you like do this thing that's hard. What? 
<laughs> it's hard, right? It's so hard. So we're basically trying to pull up our body and while in a straddle. It's helpful for jumps and stuff too and having a pulled up position. Pulled up. Love. It's very important for rhythmic. <gasps> okay, we're doing too much. Okay, I'm tired. I know you trained in Russia too. How was that process like? So training in Russia was like very intense, difficult, obviously. There's also a lot of fun because I made a lot of friends from like all around the world. It's a well-known fact within the rhythmic gymnastics community that they have, you know, some of the world's best coaches there and gymnasts would go there to improve and sometimes even up the ranking of their own home country. So in regards of training differences, the facility definitely made a big impact. Mm. I mean, they have six full-sized rhythmic gymnastics carpets huge ceilings where when you throw you cannot touch the ceiling for the life of you <laughs> they had swedish bars for ballet physical therapy they also had like instant video feedbacks on this huge display would be yourself doing routines and coaches would point out your mistakes and i'm like uh, okay oh gosh it was definitely like scrutinizing each individual point of mistake that you had in correcting it. it was, you know, very eye-opening to me. It was amazing. I always loved going there and training with them and seeing my friends. Like you got invited from Russia or No, I got invi I got invited and asked by the Federation of USA to go to Russia to train in preparation for a competition that was happening I think a week after. Mm. I, I've never had that opportunity. Heather's had many much more international things than me, so I'm like, I don't know anything. <laughs> For me, normally when I practice, uh, I did like two to three hours. But how much did you train here versus Russia? I was given a schedule of around four to five hours a day, sometimes six hours a day. And six hours was definitely in my mm -hmm. formative years. Uh, in Russia though, you get up, you train in the morning, you have a break, and then you train in the evening. And then sometimes, when you didn't really do that well, you get a break, and then you come back in the evening for a third practice. Eight hours a day? Damn. Sometimes it would be ten. I feel like, I feel like this one is go. like me in pain. While, while you're like, ah. this is Please. This is for her to be in pain, not no. me. This episode is Elena and Kane. This is my house now. <laughs> Heather gets to do over splits Ugh. because her splits are already too good. I haven't done over but, splits in a year. But I don't think this is gonna torture her because you're already so flexible. Dang, girl! Look at that. And this is her bad leg. You want to There see? is no such thing as a bad leg. It's a right leg and a left leg. Yes, that is that is. My bad, bad leg is my left leg. I'm actually mad that I'm not touching the floor right now. This is very oh upsetting. God. This is my right. So I had some, you know, competition rituals, which were like, if I ate Subways, I would do really good. So for some reason. So I started eating Subways before competition. Okay. I love my black forest ham and American cheese toasted. And olive, oh my God. Insert Elena's <laughs> Subway Please, Subway sponsor me. <laughs> um, just to, you know, just send a sandwich over yeah, to her. Send me, send me to like her, do you have like P.O. boxes or whatever? Oh yeah, send it to my P.O. box. There you go. I just get her a Subway gift just card. Just deliver it to me. And I would always read my notebook. I don't know if you've seen me like read just a notebook. Yes. I would just read it. Mm -hmm. To just like have it in my head. Yeah. But I had to do that. And also like right before I went to sleep the night before competition, I had to like imagine my routines perfectly. Did you have any like sort of ritual like that? Uh, not necessarily like a ritual like that, but what I would do is, hold on. That is very cute. It's an animal crossing towel. It was so cute. Buy it in Japan. There's a girl doing her routine on the competition floor. And I would be the next one up. Adorable. Pretend this is the um, competition like entrance. I would be like behind, like right over here. And so like nobody could see me and then like I would be like wiping my hands like you know getting ready doing like these feet things and like pushing in my arches out and then like I would go jumping a couple times and then I would like hold it like on releve. Oh if I had time after that I would just you know put the towel like on my head like this. <laughs> and, like, I would like wipe my hands and I would just like do like a couple That's breathing so exercises. Then, if I had even more time after that, 
How would like, you know, take apparatus? <laughs> All right. This is fun. No one sees the behind the scenes. I would just do like a couple of flips like this. Don't care about my bent arms right now. Like, oh crap. Cut, yeah, cut, 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 cut. No one saw that. That <laughs> You know, a couple of flips like this. Behind. Bang. Um, was it in front? Really? Wait, wait, oh I'm God, just gonna- This is like giving me like flashback <laughs> my, hand, my hands are sweating! <laughs> Holy crap! On floor with clubs, Heather Chan! Jeez, you're sitting? Oh, yeah. Damn, girl. Now, these are like more intense questions for you since mm -hmm. we're doing intense splits. Were there moments um, like where you had like setbacks and like wanted to quit or like plateaus? Hold on, one second. <laughs> Hold on, one second, one second, one second. Because I've had many. I've had many moments I wanted to quit. Mm. But I kept doing it because it's fun. I'm gonna like stick my leg up here and just kind of like be like off a little bit. If that's okay. We're, we're just gonna see your leg? Yeah, I'm just gonna see my leg at the point. I think it's safe to say that everybody, not a, not only gymnasts, like have their own plateaus and setbacks, but I definitely did. And for me, the hardest thing to overcome was my mental state of mind. Like I always felt like I wasn't good enough, despite what my parents and my coaches would tell me. And coaches all around the world would, you know, come up to me during competitions and training camps and the one that stung the most was like they would ask me like you are going to world championships right and i would always have to put on a fake smile and, and like shake my head no because unfortunately that wasn't the path that was given to me our season starts usually from like january to like august so basically for international competitions for like being selected, selected or for assigned to international competition we have a competition called challenge which is just national team members. And it's like in the very beginning of the season around February. And the committee decides based on how you did, I guess, mm -hmm. and who you are. This person gets to go to this specific competition, blah, blah, blah. I mean, nowadays they're trying to be more open and transparent about that. But there's like a lot of things that goes on behind the scenes, I feel like. In regards to politics and the unfairness of this sport, um, <gasps> There definitely <laughs> was a lot during my generation on a variety of topics that stems from judging to competitions to international assignments. But specifically speaking about competitions, I was told by one of my first coaches that if you don't give judges a reason to deduct you, they won't because they can't. That was exactly what my mother said. And it really stuck with me throughout my whole entire gymnastics career. But honestly, it did make me wonder at times, like even doing the most clean routines that I possibly could with all the capabilities that I had, like why did I not receive the results that I was hoping for or that I thought that I deserved? So I would instantly just throw myself into a loop and watch videos from that most recent competition and scrutinize in slow motion, dragging the video super slowly to see all my mistakes. I always thought that it was my own fault that I couldn't achieve the results that I thought I should have or could have. I always felt that I wasn't good enough in that regard. So even now it's hard for me to accept the fact that yes, I was good enough, um, more than good enough even, but I've had to learn and accept and overcome that, giving myself the wiggle room and saying like, hey, no, you were good enough. Yeah, that, that just, it really hits home for me. But in the end, it, it is what it is. And I'm just grateful for the opportunities that were given to me by the sport. I think I can relate to a lot of that. I feel like for us, because we have to do it perfectly, like no questions asked, you can't deduct kind of skills. Like we really worked hard to make it perfectly clean. I think it's good for us mm -hmm. to improve, but like for those other um, gymnasts or gyms where the judge just gives an okay. I think it doesn't really help them become like the best version of themselves. And then like because we couldn't get the rank that we hoped for, we also get that imposter syndrome feeling. Mm -hmm. But no, Heather was amazing. She was like an idol for me. It was, she was amazing. I always did love watching you. 
you have very difficult apparatus skills. <laughs> oh, all the coaches, my, even my mom, the judges are like, Luna, why are you doing this hard scale? It's only 0.3. I'm like, let me do it, <laughs> please. I want to look cool. That is for sure. That was one of her shows. I just wanted to look cool. I was like, why? Why be simple and easy when you can be dope and not have a good score, but be dope, you know? I had to just like not look at scores anymore. And I just had to just enjoy the routine. And as long as I was like very like satisfied, yeah. I was like, yes. Now like I really encourage, yes, scores may be important. I understand that if you're trying to make national team, if you're trying to make regional team. All but if stuff. you really love the sport for what it is, then you'll just enjoy it. It's the performance aspect is what I enjoy. Do it because it. you love it. Do it because you love it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Have a great time. If you make a mistake, oh, well, you learn from it. Move it's on. not the end, of, end of the world. world. Obviously, if it's in between routines, try. leave it all behind. Yeah. After you're done, just cry it out. But not, like, not during. That not doesn't, during. It doesn't help. Yeah, because you have a new one. Listen, you work so hard. You train so many hours in the gym just to compete for a minute and 30 seconds. For one routine in total six minutes yay don't do this by the way i do not condone this i do not encourage this but i always used to fight my coaches on the harder difficulties they would always want to take it i'm like no i want it and they would be like prove it to me do it right now i always would used to do it they're like Keep it. I feel like when, when I got older, I would complain more often be like, no, I can do it, I can do it. I would just yeah. practice so many times to so just prove them Because wrong. you felt like you had a voice yeah. at that point and yeah. you know your own capabilities. Yeah. Sometimes no, I did not. I, I did not. I did not. <laughs> and my mother would be so upset every time. Every time I did this one toss with the fish flop away. and then I did this. Hey! It's the very last thing I do in my routine. It bounces off and it just goes, goes off into the lake oh, oh my god. god a very sad story i remember my very last risk in ball i think this is what made me like fall off the national team in 2016. Uh -oh. i had the last risk and i was supposed to catch like this like uh, this or like yeah. with my leg up or something like that i'm happened. gonna pretend the camera's the judges right now like i was in the middle of the carpet and i, I basically elbowed or like it kind of just shot away and <laughs> my ball went flying straight towards the judges and it rolled all the way underneath the judges table and this was the end of my routine right so the yeah. ball stuck underneath the table <laughs> under, under oh, there and there are drapes <laughs> on this table and right in the middle of the table is the president of rhythmic gymnastics for the u.s and i had to go and i had to salute and walk straight in front of her crawl underneath the desk <laughs> grab my ball the, Amount of embarrassment and shame that I felt in that moment could it was like probably one of the worst things that I've experienced in my gymnastics career Every time I salute, I don't know why but my like eyes just go to her so yeah. Same thing, my mom yeah. when it flew away and I was like <laughs> saluting, she was like <gasps> Like sometimes when you would do so bad, you can hear the, the audience go, go oh. Oh. Or, or you can you can see the judges go Also, usually you've had a perfect routine until the very end. Yeah. And that very end, which is ruined why, it all. which is why my coaches always said to me, like the cansa, like to the end, finish all the way to the end. Same. You know it's a really bad mistake or it's a really stupid mistake when you walk back and your coach, and your coach isn't there anymore. Like they're like this, and they're like like this, right? And you drop, and they go. And they go back. Not only disappoint like or like let down yourself, you let down like you know those around you who are like supporting you, which is also like really nice to see you know the support, support. in that way. Yes. Even though it's you know not a great reaction, you know at least people are supporting you. And they're like, <laughs> what the heck happened? And I'm also like, I don't know what the heck happened. What did you do, Elena? The ball just had a mind of its own. It's not me, I swear. You also did ballet. When did you start ballet, Heather? So I started ballet because my coaches told me I have ugly feet and knees. My knees always stuck out like this, and my feet, like I'm no joke, my feet, really? when I point 
did it was like this. So I started with Miss Olga Taziakova. She helped me foster an appreciation for the art of ballet. I was able to I watch her teach privates to Christine Shevchenko, who's like mm -hmm. now a principal ballerina for ABT. Watching her practice her variations was very awe-inspiring. Due to scheduling reasons, I couldn't attend her classes anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Murat Dukai School of Ballet where I was trained under Ms. Hasmik Amirian and Mr. Murat Dukayev. And there I really started to appreciate even more the art of ballet and furthering my technique and fundamentals. When I was in New York, I auditioned to Ellison School of Ballet, Mr. Edward Ellison, who is a very great and meticulous teacher. I eventually got in and took a couple classes with the school, but due to traveling, are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I took individual independent classes with Miss Lucy Rayanova, Miss Elena Kunikova, and Mr. Kenny Larson in New York City. Was there like any difference between like the ballet training and the rhythmic training? Her rhythmic arms have to be like always like predominantly straight and length and elongated, whereas in Ballet, it's like very like soft and like not always very stiff and tight. For rhythmic, my coach would be like your closed and square and yeah. knee facing down, knee facing heel down, facing right. up. But then ballet, they want you to open it, it right? right? And then, then you have like a wing here at the end. Yeah. Heather has scoliosis. Huh. So I wanted to ask you about how it was like having scoliosis and doing all this hard training and being a professional rhythmic gymnast. For those who don't know, scoliosis is when you have a curvature in your spine in the form of an S shape, which leads you to be quite crooked. So one side of your back would be more protruding out than the other. For me, it's my right side of my back on the top protrudes more and the bottom part of my lower back protrudes out more. So I have scoliosis in two places on my spine. It was not due to gymnastics, it was actually genetic. My parents have known about it for quite a while and every year they would do my annual checkups with the pediatrician and they would ask her, say, hey, you know, scoliosis does run in the family, can you please, you know, check? Mm. And she would, but it wasn't really diagnosed and it wasn't really seen until I was six years old. So mm. before I even started gymnastics, mm -hmm. they were able to see like a little bit of curvature and degree and it progressively got worse. And then I started doing gymnastics and ballet very intensively. And only when I started doing it very intensively did they see actually an improvement in my spine mm -hmm. because you have to hold your posture and use your, muscles. use your muscles to hold it rather than using a back brace where you don't use any muscle and you just rely on a brace to help hold mm -hmm. you and stabilize you. With that being said, it was very imperative for me to do both sides. Mm. So stretching the right leg as well as the left leg, doing skills on the right and left leg. If you do have scoliosis, work on your core, both legs. And any exercises that your physical therapist gives yes. you. Please. I should be working on my core muscles. <laughs> How many physical therapists have told me that? Shout out to Amanda and Melissa if you're watching this. <laughs> It's okay, she's busy with school right now, you know? Yeah, well, let's just make up excuses. Just, you know, she trained a lot, so now she's like, I'm I, going I, I, to I, I, I deserve a break. And also, even if you don't have scoliosis, Do I know both sides. Yeah, I know I, my left is terrible, but it's only because of my knee problem. <laughs> but, excuses. There is. But I do recommend doing both sides because in the end, like it'll help you all. And square hips, guys. How did you get so flexible? As a child, yeah, I was just soft, naturally, muscular wise. And well, you can do I that. really kept, what? You can do the other side. Yeah. Both sides. <laughs> Even with apparatus. And I really capitalized off of my strengths. I always wanted to push myself flexibility wise because I realized as I got older and when I started doing more skills that were harder, it was easier to be able to do those skills. It did come with some downfalls of like not wanting to practice with apparatus because I would rather sit in splits <laughs> or come late to practice so that I wouldn't have to do conditioning. <laughs> I just, you know, sat in splits like a lot. Eventually the pain, the pain became a comfort knowing that it would help me. One. Oh, yeah. I had that mastery for years and I still can't do it. How embarrassing is that? Hold on, I have pants too. I'm gonna blame it on my pants. This live. Yeah, I blame it on my pants. 
Oh, I did it. Okay. Maybe we can only edit that one and we can we can cut out the rest okay. of it. Last time I worked with Heather, she needed some av help. So so since I've been struggling, it is time for Heather to struggle because I'm such a nice host. Yeah, I'm I'm helping you, remember? Core muscles. Yeah. Oh wow, you wanna throw that in my face now? <laughs> Heather retired. It's been four years and my question to you What is my question to you? Oh. <laughs> Why did you retire? Because I felt that it was my time to move on. I wanted to pursue my career after Rhythmic and my hip at that point was hurting. So I decided that, you know, it was time and I didn't really feel the love for the sport that I once had. How was the transition like coming out of rhythmic gymnastics? I had a complete identity loss because I have been identifying myself and I thought of myself as an athlete and I never even really thought of myself as a student because I was barely on campus at school. It was really hard and so I went to this actual workshop that Team USA provided called the ACE Pivot Program. I'm not sure if it is okay. called anything different now, but it was a, a program for athletes to figure out how to transition into, you know, normal life without competitive sports. You go through the five stages of grief, which is true because it's kind of like you're not, losing, you're like losing a, part of, a part of yourself that you've had for so long. I don't want to put it in like such morbid terms, but there was like a, like a death of like somebody inside of you mm -hmm. that you, you know, correlated with for so long. I think up until like about a year to year and a half ago was when I really truly realized that, okay, like I am done with this grieving process, what's next? Which led me to really dive back into my studies, pursue a life outside of gymnastics. The timing of when I retired in COVID really did not give me too much time to figure out what I wanted to do with my life because I was grieving during that time. I didn't really want to think about anything else. I didn't want to do anything else. And that even went with hobbies. The past year I've been experiencing a whole different variety of experiences and just trying to figure out what I like. I've gotten very much invested into ballroom, specifically Latin dancing. Only now, like four years later, am I able to say that I'm on solid ground on two feet and I have some sort of direction where I want things to go in my life. Oh God! When did you start coaching then? I started coaching actually exactly one year ago. Oh wow! Congratulations! Thank you! As you turn 25, Mm -hmm. What are your new like goals? My goal is to live life as passionately as I can and doing things that make me happy. So if I don't like feel any joy or happiness doing something that I am currently invested in doing, especially if there's not going to be an outcome for me, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So now it's cool down time because of all the long stretching. We've actually been talking for a real long time. To wrap it all together, any advice you would like to give to our fellow audience of Rhythmic Gymnasts? Being squared is very important. <laughs> I think we touched upon that quite a few times. Go watch my video on square splits. Thank you. Doing skills on both legs. Coaches always told me decansal, which means to the end. So finish up everything to the end. One thing my coaches also told me is one step at a time. Do things one at a time. So do you have like any advice for people that are coming out of a sport? Don't be afraid to talk to others that have gone through it and ask for their advice and your support system, like your family, your friends, even though if they don't know what you're going through, just talk to them about it anyways. And maybe they can give you some insight that, you know, you didn't think about or from an outside perspective. Any advice to just people in general, what you've learned? throughout either just rhythmic or just now. Don't give up when things are tough and don't be afraid for going for the things that you want. The big thing is that if you want to, you would do it. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to, you're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Do what makes you happy. If not, then there isn't really, I don't know, to me it doesn't feel like you're really living life if you're not living it happy. I like that. Positive vibes. Positive vibes only. Always. If there's toxicity in your life, shoot it. Drop it. Away. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching our Thank first you. episode of Open Up. Woohoo!
hopefully we can do more. I want to like invite multiple different types of people and learn their experience and whatever they do. And also if they could help you guys, that would be great. Thank you, Heather, for being our first guest. Thank you for having me. I think we've learned a lot from her. I've definitely learned a lot. If you want to follow her throughout her journey, this is her at. Uh, Elena edits. Also, wait, you have to stay in this plank the whole time. Your, your butt has to be lower. Jeez. All right, you have to stay there until I finish. Oh my God. Don't forget to like and help me out so I Go can on, do. Let's speak faster. I can do more of these videos. <laughs> um, and yeah, comment any more questions you may have. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm dying. Yeah, I'm gonna keep her there. And um, what else can I say? Oh my God. Um, yeah, don't forget to follow Heather. Don't forget to follow me too on all my socials. Thank you very much. Uh, I still want to force her to do this. So what else should I say? Uh, nothing more. Uh, and bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I haven't played in so long. That was fun. Thank y'all for joining. See you on the next Open Up episode. Elena out. Boom. <laughs> How do I stop this? <laughs>